coronary calcium scanning, what role does this play? I know this is a very common test that people do, and it's very easily available um, and very cheap as well. You also mentioned about this. Would you suggest this to be a better test than something else on the market, for example, a clearly test perhaps? It's not better than a clearly scan. It's a different type of CT scan. Um, and I'll, I'll explain the difference between the two. Traditionally, you know, patients don't normally go to a cardiologist unless they're having symptoms. You know, if they're having chest pain, shortness of breath, exercise intolerance, they see a cardiologist, they do an EKG, they put them on a treadmill, they do a stress test. If it's abnormal, they go to the cath lab and maybe they get a stent. Or the stress test is normal, they say, well, you probably don't have severe blockages and then they treat their blood pressure or lipids, whatever they find. But yeah. you want to look for the plaque before you even have symptoms because, like we said earlier, you know, 50, maybe 70% of the time people have heart attacks, they had no symptoms before that heart attack took off. Um, and so the CT coronary calcium test kind of helps restratify people into low risk or high risk. So calcium is supposed to be in your bones, not in your arteries. Calcium in the arteries indicates that you have plaque in the arteries and the body is trying to take care of that plaque by putting smooth muscle over it and eventually calcifying that plaque, literally putting bone in the arterial wall to seal the plaques into the artery wall to prevent it from rupturing. So the calcium score test should be zero forever. And I've seen patients in their 80s with calcium scores of zero. Now, when should you start it? You know, most guidelines are going to say 45. I used to say 40, but I've seen patients, you know, 36 with very high scores. So I probably moved my target down to 35 is a decent time to start. You know, especially if somebody has a family history, you know, if their dad had events in their 50s, screen people at least 10 years earlier than when their parents had an event. Um, but that being said, if your CT coronary calcium score is zero, you're a very low risk individual from, you know, for the next five years, at least probably, you know, the, the quoted data is that it's about a 0.4% risk of having a heart attack or stroke if your calcium score is zero. It's never zero because you can still have soft plaque that doesn't get picked up on that scan. Um, but at least get you ballpark started, you know, high risk, low risk. You know, if your score is over 400, that's considered high risk. Over a thousand is very high risk. And I've seen scores as high as 7,700, you know, so it's a wide variety of uh, values you can see. But if your score is zero, you would likely repeat it within three to five years to see, is it still zero? But if your score is above zero, there's really no strong reason you should ever repeat it to start treating that individual. They've already demonstrated that they're higher risk. They're already laying down plaque. So it's a good test. Most of the time, the test is about $100 to $300 in most you know, locales. So usually approachable for most people. The other test that you mentioned, it's a more sensitive test, but it's a little bit different in that it requires an IV. It requires IV contrast. You often have to take a beta blocker to slow your heart rate down to the 50s and 60s because you know the heart is always beating. And the faster your heart's beating, the more artifact can be uh, picked up on a CT scan. Um, so you have to have normal kidneys because the contrast gets filtered out of it. You can't have a contrast allergy or you got to be pre-medicated with it. So it's a little bit more challenging to get person to the scanner. There's more radiation with the CT coronary angiogram than there is a calcium scan. The calcium scan test is about equivalent to a mammogram for women. Um, but the CT angiogram can actually quantify not only the degree of stenosis or blockage in the arteries, but starts looking at the quality of the plaque in the arteries, especially when you layer on the the Clearly analysis. So Clearly is a, a company that has an AI algorithm that voxel by voxel chops up the CT coronary injury, uh, images and will quantify the total plaque volume in the arterial wall. So if you think of like an artery as like a, you know, a garden hose, how much of the wall of the garden hose actually has plaque in it? Sometimes I also use the analogy of like an iceberg, you know, plaque is growing, you know, below the surface of the ocean and eventually kind of pops its head out with the tip of the iceberg. So the clearly can actually quantify the total plaque volume, but then it will give you the hard plaque, how much soft plaque, and how much low density plaque is present. And it's that soft plaque and that low density plaque that is likely the more vulnerable plaque, the plaque that's more likely to pop and cause heart attacks. All right, definitely. The calcium score may not detect the non-calcified portions, and those are the portions that um, are more likely to cause, cause an acute problem a as such. Um, and I think that goes to show that uh, it was considered or possibly still considered uh, by many cardiac catheterization as the gold standard in, um, in diagnosing your risk for or at ruling out coronary artery disease in a way uh, that, okay, you have a cardiac catheterization, it's clean, you don't have any blockages or stenosis that could be opened up perhaps, and then you're okay. 
Um, is that an accurate assessment or things are changing? No, it's absolutely not a true assessment. And I can definitely, you know, do, tell that from a personal experience. You know, I didn't have you know, hundreds, if not thousands of cats before I kind of retired from the cat lab. You know, having clean cores is not a guarantee that you won't have a heart attack. You know, 99% of your blood vessels you know, are smaller than a human hair. You know, it's your microcirculation that's pumping the majority of the oxygen nutrients through your 60,000 miles of blood vessels. So I had mentioned earlier, it's like an iceberg sometimes with the plaques. So when you do a, you know, an angiogram and you're, you know, uh, injecting contrast material down the, the arterial lumen, you're just looking for stenosis. You know, you can eyeball, if the arteries are very calcified, you can see that when you're on the fluoroscope. But unless they do intravascular ultrasound, you're not actually looking in the walls of the arteries where the plaques are actually hiding. So unless the plaque is large enough to occlude flow and you, you know, visually see something 70% or greater restricting flow, or you do a fractional flow reserve uh, where you pass a wire, pass the obstruction and measure, you know, the, the flow past the obstruction. If it's, you know, less than a certain value, then they say, oh, it's, you know, Area is likely ischemic, we should intervene on this artery with either a stent or bypass. You know, you just say, oh, they, they have non obstructive disease and should be medically managed. Well, yes, everybody should be medically managed, but that doesn't mean that they're low risk by any means. You know, they could have a lot of plaque in the arteries that could rupture the next day. You know, they just didn't require a stent at that time. So, um, so you know, the angiograms, you know, having a clean angiogram is not a guarantee that you're necessarily low risk for a heart attack. Thanks for watching and I appreciate you as a valuable viewer and if you liked this segment you can watch all of the different individual segments or the whole podcast to have a broader understanding on this topic. Just check the links in the description or what you see on the screen right now. I'm Dr. Umar Khan, looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you.